A strain echocardiography by speckel tracking and tissue Doppler. Part 2. General concept. Let's uh, start this presentation with this question. Why the during systole, the base of the heart moves toward the apex and apex is stable and doesn't move at all. Even we can, as we know, we can measure uh, this movement of the base of the heart by TAPSI and MAPSI. So very clear uh, these uh, changes uh, we will see during uh, cardiac activity. Why is that? Why the apex doesn't move to, toward the in and only base of the heart move forward toward the apex? The answer is uh, related to the Newton's third uh, law, that action and reaction law. For example, here we have a rocket. Uh, when the engine burns the fuel, the gas with the force come out. Based on this law, the amount of the force of gas exactly apply the opposite way to the engine and that reason uh, it caused the rocket move forward. It happened to the left ventricular and right ventricular or generally heart during uh, systole. When the left ventricular, for example, uh, contract, the blood goes toward the aorta and go outside. The force of the blood that goes outside toward the aorta it creates and apply the same amount of the force opposite way to the left ventricular and especially to the apex because of the cross section area is lower the other part and so there will be a lot of pressure toward the apex force and that force is enough to keep the apex not move to the uh, base and we know that heart is surrounded by pericardium and by its connection it doesn't let the heart total heart move the forward so the only way for ejection uh, ejecting blood to outside is that the left ventricular radius decreased and the base move uh, toward the apex Keep it in this concept in your mind, we use it in the uh, strain echo. Now, let's uh, answer to this question. What is a strain? Do you remember ejection fraction? Ejection fraction is the percentage or fraction of left ventricular volume changes during cardiac activity. In other words, the percentage of left ventricular volume that from end uh, diastolic change due, uh, at the end of the systole and we measure end diastolic volume minus uh, left ventricular systolic volume divided by end uh, left ventricular and diastolic volume multiple hundred it gives us ejection fraction so ejection fraction is percentage of left ventricular volume changes. Strain is the same as ejection fraction. The only difference is instead of the measuring left ventricular volume changes during cardiac activity, we measure left ventricular length changes. We call it longitudinal strain or we measure and calculated the thickness changes the percentage of thickness change we call it radial strain so it's very easy we use the same formula uh, for the longitudinal strain we measure the length at the end of the diastole at, at the end of the systole then we put in the this uh, equation and we calculate longitudinal strain. If you want to uh, measure and calculate uh, radial strain, we just measure 
the thickness of the myocardium at the end of the diastole and end of the systole and then we put in the equation again we can calculate radial strain so it will not be irrelevant if we use length fraction for uh, longitudinal strain and thickness fraction for uh, radial strain but the strain word is more comprehensive and cover uh, a lot of different uh, definition so we use strain more and uh, generally for example here if we assume this uh, band we will be represent uh, one of the left ventricular wall during end diastole and be for example 10 centimeter and the, at the end of the systole become 8 centimeter the amount of uh, longitudinal strain will be 20 percent but for the longitudinal strain when uh, left ventricular at the systole uh, length decrease and become shorter we use uh, minus uh, units negative uh, we, uh, we uh, use minus uh, or negative unit why it's because of the meaning of strain uh, the original meaning of strain means a force tending to pull or stretch a structure so based on the meaning we uh, we assume that uh, with that force that is a systolic or contraction the length should be increased but since the during systole length decrease we label it negative and we call it negative in the normal longitudinal strain but what about the radial strain in radial strain at the end of the and at the end of the systole the thickness increased so is the direction of the definition of the strain so the unit will be positive now another example imagine this bound will be a segment of the left ventricular and at the end of the diastole is get, let's get it three centimeter and uh, at the end of the systole it become 3.3 centimeter so how much will be uh, longitudinal strain the 3.3 minus uh, 3 minus 3.3 uh, minus 3 divided by 3 it become almost a multiple 100 percent it become 10 percent and since this strength or length has been increased the unit will be positive because is that exactly correspond with the definition of a strain so we have 10 percent strain in that case you have to remember not necessary positive strain meaning uh, ischemia or some necrosis at that segment because it's dependent on what time of uh, that strain we uh, measure it for example when we have uh, left bundle branch block uh, some part of the left ventricular more specific lateral ward uh, it's uh, during early systolic phase it relax but that that same time the septum start contraction so this caused the lateral wall stretch at early systolic phase and give us a positive strain but at the later of the systole the lateral wall start contraction and we give a negative strain and normal contraction so just keep in your mind not necessary always a positive longitudinal strain means we have pathology problem in that uh, myocardial structure it can be electrical or uh, desynchrony now let's see another example for the radial uh, strain imagine this segment at the end the has the thickness is 10 millimeter millimeter 
and uh, at the end of the system it become let's say 14 millimeter the amount of the radial strain will be 40 percent since is uh, the direction of increasing the number so will be positive uh, 40 percent now let's see how many type of the strains we have as we know uh, uh, now uh, that their left ventricular has three specific and distinguished layer that in each layer the arrange of the fiber are very specific and different from each other this three layer is one of them is inner side uh, toward the endocardium we call it endocardial layer this layer the fiber arrangement is longitudinal and this uh, part of the myocardium is more responsible for longitudinal shortening of the left ventricular during systole the middle one is circumferential the arrangement of the fiber and is most responsible for radial contraction and the lat the outer layer or epicardial layer has oblique fiber arrangement this one and this uh, layer contraction of this layer are responsible for rotation of the or twisting of the heart the pattern of the twist because of this arrangement is that uh causes the base of the heart twist or rotate clockwise and apex of the heart twist or rotate counterclockwise so it give a ringing motion to the heart so based on this uh, pattern of the myocardial movement and deformity we have at least four type of the uh, strain longitudinal circumferential radial and the last one here rotational that rotational in the base will be clockwise and at apex will be counterclockwise the differences between this uh, uh, rotational that we the unit is degree uh, between the base and apex we called it twist and if we calculate the differences and divide it uh, to the distance between these two uh, spot base and the apex we measure uh, left ventricular torsion here are those definitions that uh, abbreviation uh, the, those definition and term that we use in uh, strain study now let's see how strain is measured we have three ways to measure strain M mode tissue doppler and speckle tracking let's start with the M mode strain as you remember from the MAPSI and TAPSI on MAPSI we measure the amount of the uh, annulus of mitral valve how much it moved during uh, systole toward the apex so this amount or mapsy of both of them the average of this both uh, medial annulus and lateral annulus in this example here these two one of them this is medial, medial septal or medial and lateral is 1.7 centimeter and the other one lateral one is 1 1.9 centimeter the average will be 1.8 centimeter so the mean map c here will represent exactly the mean of the uh, length changes of the length of the myocardium during systole this equation so with knowing this different changes only for calculation strain we just need the length of the uh, left ventricular at the end of the diastole we have two way to measure or three way to measure 
the length of the ventricular in the diastole. One of them is we go and measure at the endocardium, measure the curve and calculate uh, how much is that at both sides here, left and right. And then these two numbers, we calculate the mean of those two and we divided 1.8, the average changes to that number and it give us uh, global longitudinal strain based on this this measurement but we can have measure the left ventricular length on this line the green one is if you measure it that is that apex to the mid of the onus of the mitral valve it give us the number uh, 11.2 and the global uh, longitudinal strain will be 16 and also on for these two uh, dimension will be uh, minus 15.8 as you notice here based on the the length of the uh, left ventricular which of those spots we use the strain will be different a lot one of them 14 15.8 and 16.3 not only because of that, or even depending on which part of the myocardium we measure length of the my, uh, ventricular, the amount of the uh, strain, lo global longitudinal strain will be different. For example, in this phantom sample, the strain in the same heart uh, at the same time, uh, if we take this line and the cardial line for our measurement the strain uh, longitudinal strain will be minus 24 if we use mid of the myocardium will be minus 18 and if we use epicardial line or contour will be minus 13. for this reason we don't use not only that reason, the other reason, inter-observer is differences between machine and the view of the image. We don't uh, use MAPC or M mode for measuring uh, longitudinal strain because it will not be very accurate and is more subjective. Uh, but in this uh, concept, the machine for uh, in a speckle tracking and tissue doublet uh, strain we use this concept for measuring global uh, longitudinal strain and as a, a strain task for uh, standardization uh, we use endocardial line for our measurement in global longitudinal strain now let's see how we uh, measure strain in tissue doppler as you know tissue doppler in tissue doppler the machine or software uh, cut and turn off the wall filter and decrease the gain in that way machine can catch tissue very easy and it can add it color on the tissue we don't see any blood flow anymore and we can uh, co colorize the tissue uh, very easy with this concept and if we put sample any spot of that wall anywhere we can do pulse doppler on uh, and measure the velocity the changes of velocity during cardiac activity at each spot that here for example medial annulus we can get it this uh, parse doppler of the annulus and as you know this is s prime e prime a prime and so on if we do uh, and do doppler in two spot we can calculate it very easy strain rate by this formula the machine calculate very easy and uh, show on the strain rate curve on this image for comparing, you can see what is those uh, result of measuring. This top, this top is curved for the parse doppler of one point, one spot, but the bottom is when we have measuring uh, two spots, we can 
take the and get the curve strain curve for that segment very easy and if we use the uh, this formula for those spot we can get the curve for strain rate as you notice here the the curve of strain rate are more detail oriented and sensitive to the event uh, compared to the strain curve here even at uh, IVRT or is a volumetric relaxation term we have some uh, positive deflection here we have correspond with E prime we have uh, positive and here A prime the same but on the strain we don't have those detailed changes that happen very shortly during cardiac activity that is the main differences between the strain rate curve and measurement and strain alone so the strain rate is more event timing sensitive if we do this uh, tissue doppler in different spot we can take them and record uh, and show display at the same time we will have a display in different parameter for velocity for displacement uh, and strain or strain rate and if we put in all segment and we show all of them at the same time in the chart we will see exactly all those segment uh, strain rate changes during cardiac activity and each color uh, correspond with the segment that uh, the color has been done to the uh, sample volume or ROI for each segment now another way to display the strain and strain rate is color M mode we just need it on the uh, tissue Doppler we select the uh, uh, color M mode application or CAM C A M M and when we use that one and we select the interest area ROI it give us a strain rate uh, color mode display as you see here how it you read it this uh, color M mode is very easy look at the color box here if the the positive or stretching that part segment it show blue green to blue if it's negative or become contract and shortening it show yellow to red negative shift and here is annotated apex is top and base is the bottom here we are doing strain rate on the septal so the top is apex mid is mid and basal is basal here we have at the horizontal uh, axis we have EKG and time and when you look at this you will see at the early of systole the apical and mid segment become positive shift or stretching so blue and green is positive sure stretching uh, those spot those segments during early systolic phase is stretching and elongate but the base has contraction and negative shifts uh, red and yellow at the mid of the systole or actually peak of the systole the mid and apical has is hypokinetic because it's close to the zero or, or the border of the uh, red and blue so we have hypokinesis at these two segments apex and mid but the at the basal we have uh, still negative shift at the after closing of the aortic valve here the red spot at the end of the t we have some positive negative shift or uh, shortening here shortening or contraction at the apical and uh, mid segment but here we have relaxation so we have post systolic shortening in this case we can read very easy just uh, we have to focus 
those changes correspond with the timing and EKG. Now let's see how speckle tracking strain work. As we know, speckle means a spot or dots. And we know that each segment of the myocardium has a specific pattern, echogenicity pattern uh, for in echo or in ultrasound. This specific pattern is used like fingerprint for that segment and the machine can detect that pattern or fingerprint for each of those segments when we put sample or ROI on that segment and trace it and track it and follow that uh, pattern during uh, cardiac activity in two dimension. Uh, in two dimension, instead of the one dimension in a tissue doppler, it can detect in the two dimension, horizontal and vertical. And even in 3D machine, it can track in three dimension. We have, uh, based on this, we have uh, four main types of the speckle tracking strain, longitudinal, circumferential, and radial. As you notice, the, uh, the normal uh, longitudinal and circumferential will be negative shift, the peak will be negative, and for radial will be positive that I explained at the beginning of the this uh, presentation. The normal range for longitudinal and circumferential in uh, all ages and all gender almost is the same and will be minus 18 to 20 percent. And for the radial strain will be around positive 40 percent. The last one that uh, sometimes they use it, especially right now in the researches, they use it, is rotational uh, strain. That's, I'm not going to talk about this in this lecture. In the clinical application of strain, I will go and explain those conditions that rotational strain can help us in some specific disease and condition of the heart. Here is a sample of the strain in apical four chamber and in this machine is Philips. You will see here we have uh, uh, ROI uh, or uh, region of interest completely trace the myocardium all wall and during the contraction, it changed the color and the width and completely traced the endocardium and even annotate each segment and the peak of the longitudinal strain for each of those segments. And the bottom, we have strain curve and the maximum uh, time of the, uh, the time of the peak strain as, as shown in with dot here here as with that. Each uh, line has related color for the segment in the 2D that show and uh, these dots uh, represent the peak of that strain of that specific segment. When we finished, uh, finished all three uh, when we do uh, any uh, speckle uh, tracking strain in any view, the machine give the result and show the result in two different ways. Uh, in this machine, for example, the uh, GE vivid, it show in four panel. One of them is dynamic movement of the uh, left ventricular. The bottom is show the E segment, the peak of longitudinal strain top one show the curve, strain curve, and color and mode strain. 
when we finished all those three view for strain the final result will show up by uh, bull's eyes plot as you see here it show all segments the pick of the strain for each of them and even the changes of the color showed how much uh, we have a strain and at the number the most important number here is global left ventricular global longitudinal strain that it gives us and we use for our interpretation as uh, i mentioned the normal range for the gls here we have uh, the differences between the strain rate curve and color and mode and strain color uh, curve and color and mode how much difference is between these two parameters as you may notice in the strain rate we will see more detail even e prime changes that the, uh, correspond with e prime and a prime and even uh, ivrt ivct and this ejection time but on the strain curve and color and mode we don't see too much on uh, of those detail in other words strain rate is more sensitive to event timing if you want to uh, learn more and study more there is a site the dr stoylen site here it gives you a lot of information and you can use those uh, information at the end i want to uh, bring this uh, strain special strain echo on the apical four and see what those parameter and element we will see in the result here we have uh, three panel one is the dynamic or here is picture the static of the uh, our ROI and the uh, image here at the right we have a strain curve for each of those segments and here we have color and mode of the strain let's go with the strain curve as you will see we have for each of those segments has a specific color and the the curve related to that show with the same color at the bottom we have horizontal line we have time and we have ekg on ekg and display of this curve the machine show the timing of the mitral valve closing aortic valve opening here aortic valve closing and mitral valve opening here at the red end of the t we have aortic valve closing that is very important now let's read it how what changes happen in this strain on the left uh, ventricular in apical four here we have these two uh, segments as you notice these two segments we have positive strain means stretching at the early of the system the other three these three this apical mid and basal septal they have negative strain or contraction or shortening normal so we have some uh, desynchrony between the lateral wall and septal wall those two segments here show contraction at the end of the systole this is avc so show the peak strain negative at the end so we have post systolic uh, thickening, uh, thickening or contraction so we have discrepancy between these two wall when the amount of the discrepancy we can measure it time is here from here to here so it's almost over 350 millisecond differences as I've, and as you know these differences if it's more than 130 millisecond we have 
this uh, symptomatic or meaningful dyssynchrony and since the this dotted line is global strain and it decreased to the almost minus seven or eight so this patient has heart failure with dyssynchrony that can be uh, can take advantage of uh, this in, uh, seed, uh, cardiac dyssynchrony therapy. Here, this is the same uh, differences and changes we will see on color mode. Each, uh, uh, each row here represents the same uh, segment, has the same color, yellow, this part, yellow, is belong to the basal septal, blue, green, and so on to the red. As you notice, exactly we will have the same changes in the strain curve we saw, we will see in here. At the early systolic phase, we have contraction at this three segment. But we have relaxation or stretching at this three other segment at early systolic. At the end of the post systolic, we have this three segment uh, contraction and shortening. Is exactly correspond these color changes uh, on the color mode with the changes on strain curve. I hope you like this uh, presentation and if you thought it was useful, uh, please be generous and share it.